Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Model King re-release of the AMT 1969 GTO Funny Car, The Judge. This kit is number 21891P in the catalog, and it's a limited edition, but it can still be found in larger hobby shops and online. It's seen multiple box art releases over the years for approximately 40 years, and uh, the seems like the molds have been cleaned up nicely and repaired, with very little flash on this kit compared to previous versions. The uh, skill level is about uh, for the intermediate builder, although no ratings were given by the manufacturer. The build consists of 92 pieces, molded in white, chrome, clear, and clear red, and has vinyl tires. There are two sheets of decals, one being all new and a bonus reproduction of the vintage AMT Here Comes the Judge Kit, the 57 T-Bird, and its decals are reproduced here for you to use. You get nicely detailed motor and also some extra details. The tubular frame needs construction as it comes in multiple parts, but the body is a single cast with minor mold lines and it's a stock body if you want to use it for other builds. The tires are a matching set of front skinnies and a mismatched set of rear slicks, one Goodyear and one Racemaster. Overall the dimensions are 8 inches long, 3 inches wide, and 2 and a quarter inches high. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see they're very colorful and the registry is good. There's quite a plethora of examples here for you to use so you get to choose the one you like best. Now I would suggest for some of the longer decals that you use some of the setting solutions available on the aftermarket. And please know that we'll be using uh, Mas Model Masters liquid cement for most of the construction, but also super glue for strength and white glue for clear parts. Please remind yourself to use uh, heed all of the manufacturer's suggestions uh, for safety and use for any of the products you see here in the review. Gather these parts to assemble the motor prior to paint. The block halves and the transmission halves are put together and attached together and then add the heads in the oil pan. I painted my motor red, but do the color of your choice. The transmission is steel colored. Now paint the starter black and the oil filter orange. Assemble the blower onto the manifold and add the fronts and the backs. Then install the carbs to the top and add the blower unit to the motor and the valve covers to the heads. I wanted to add some detail to this kit as the motor is exposed when the body is up, so I decided to wire the motor. I used a pre-wired distributor and coil for that, and there's many different brands, but I just made these at home from some small wires and some plastic tubing. Um, using a GM wiring diagram, I'll wire the motor, and then first drill out the hole for the uh, distributor shaft and install it with super glue. Then drill out the location on the heads for the spark plugs. Cut a small part of black wire for the boots and slide it onto each wire, then match the wires up to the diagram and cut to fit. Slide each wire into place uh, with the boot at the hole to make it look correct and then super glue all the wires into place. Now add the coil to the, and to the center wire and cut it to fit sitting behind the blower. Get these parts out for the front tires and they are skinnies and uh, they match but they're non-directional so they can go on either side. Now use a, a sheet of 220 sandpaper and press and roll the tread on a flat surface uh, to kind of rough up the tire tread giving it a used look. Now paint the rim back aluminum, insert the rim front and back into the tire. We'll use these parts to assemble the rear tires and the rear tires are slicks that don't match and they're non-directional. Um, once again, use some light sandpaper on a flat surface and press and roll the tread on there to rough up the tread area, giving the tire a used look. Paint the rim back and hub aluminum. The interface of the rim uh, back is flat black. Now attach the rim front to the rim back and insert the hub without glue. Um, use the hub retainer and just glue that only. The uh, rear tires will roll and insert this uh, unit into the tires. The chassis can be assembled in multiple stages, and I recommend using super glue for this construction for strength. The front shock unit is chrome, uh, but I'm going to paint mine. Once again though, uh, always scrape off any glue or paint uh, for your contact surfaces for gluing so that they adhere and bond properly. Now, um, like I said, I'm going to paint mine 
but don't add yours prior to paint if you want it chrome. So start uh, the lower cross member and install it in place and add the front motor mount. Then add the cro a rear cross member and note there's a construction problem with the rear motor mount. See the on this next step, you'll see uh, that the rear engine mount is not correct. Uh, this arrow here points to where the mark is located uh, on the build, and it doesn't go there. The mount needs to be attached further up on the chassis. The red circle here shows how the actual mount doesn't even fit the transmission as it should. A proper repair would be to remove the transmission mount from the cross member and slide the cross member into the proper location to support the motor. Then attach the cross member in place on the frame. Now the chassis can be assembled and painted as a unit. I painted mine uh, semi-gloss black and the springs uh, when they were dry uh, I dry brushed the, the outside edges with steel and uh, to highlight just the coils. Assemble the rear axle halves and paint them black, and the drive shaft is steel. Now assemble the traction bars on the axle, but don't glue them there yet. We'll install these motor and sus suspension parts next. Uh, so paint the uh, belt a flat black, and the sway bar and the headers are steel color. Scrape off any paint at the contact points, and install the motor into place, and add the belt to the front mount. The fuel pump should be mounted in the belt, uh, but the pump is too large to fit, so I had to leave it off. Now install the rear springs, add the suspension in place, mounting it to the springs in the frame. Then install the drive shaft at this time. Add the sway bar to the frame and the axle. Now we're going to add some more of the front suspension pieces, so gather these parts up and get ready to install those next. Install the front suspension by adding the axle to the springs. Then install the traction bar and the linkage to the axle. Add the front suspension arms into place on the frame and the axle. Now grab these parts from the box. The interior is next. Now there aren't any decals for the instruments, but I chose to use ones that I found on the internet and I printed them out with a color printer and cut them to fit. Otherwise just paint the instruments white with black indicators and the floor, the seat, the console, the column and the wheel are all flat black. Glue the seat to the floor there and then add the shifter. Uh, on the console add the brake and the gas pedals and the column. Now install the instruments onto the column and add the wheel. And note that the column sits straight up when it's installed as the instructions advise. But flip the column over and install it upside down to give it the proper look. Install the floor and the console into the chassis. Next we'll be working with these pieces to uh, finish up the chassis. Uh, so include the uh, wheel sub-assemblies and stage those for installation. We can finish the chassis now by installing the uh, roll cage and the wheels. And the cage parts and the wheelie bars are black. Assemble the fuel tank and install it on the front of the frame and install the steering linkage and the axle to the console. Now add the rear tires by gluing just the axle and then slide the front tires on the axles and only glue the retainer cap. Assemble and install the roll cage. Add the wheelie bars to the rear axle now. The panels on the interiors can be assembled and prepared for paint. Once you get those together and they're dry, go ahead and paint those aluminum color. Get the body color parts together and this is a stock GTO body. For an authentic looking funny car, you should remove all of the molded on trim and the door handles, if you desire. I'm just going to leave mine on there for looks, but on the body, add the rear spoiler if you want to use it, and wet sand the body with an 800 grit sandpaper to prep it for primers. Now, a note that any of the mold lines that could be there on the quarter panels, etc., need to be sanded down smooth prior to that and there's a decent sized mold line on each side of the roof line up near the top. There's an undocumented uh, piece from this kit that probably was left over from another version, but I thought it would look good on my car, so um, I went ahead and added that. So I just attached it to the lower front grill area covering the stock lights and the intake vents. 
Once you've got all the pieces into place and you've sanded off all the blemishes and if you desire all of the trim pieces and door handles, um, now it's time to uh, prime the body. And I used good quality primer and sprayed uh, some nice even coats inside and out. And once it was cured, uh, I, w I used some more of that 800 grit wet or dry paper and sanded it down nice and smooth. Then you just rinse it off and let it air dry. I decided to paint my car with Alclad Candy Orange Paint. And this is a two-stage part a paint that needs uh, also a clear coat. So first you paint the, um, the base with a silver, uh, let that dry thoroughly, and then uh, spray it with very light coats of the Candy Orange Paint and to get the desired result. And once that's dry, uh, you can uh, let that set uh, and get it ready for decals. So you're going to want to use plenty of warm water after your body is dry and then you can go ahead and let those uh, large decals soak for probably at least 30 seconds uh, to float free and then uh, slide them off onto the body that also has some warm water on it to position them in place using some of the uh, micro scale or other uh, aftermarket uh, setting solutions to make sure they stick well and, and conform to the contours of the body. Once those have dried overnight, give your body a clear coat to seal them in and give the body a nice shine. Back in 69, the body still featured a lot of chrome trim. So I'm going to use uh, a foil application here. Um, it's sold at the hobby shops and you just cut some thin strips off and then uh, place it where the trim is and then use a very sharp, actually new hobby blade to remove any excess. And then you burnish it down and it looks pretty nice, just like real trim. I dipped the window glass into some uh, Pledge Floor Care. It's a liquid uh, floor care wax and uh, then wicked off the excess and let it dry. It makes it look thinner and crisper. Then I took some white glue, uh, beaded around the window areas and uh, glued that into place in, in the interior. Now uh, do a test fit and find the gluing contact points and then go ahead and glue the interior pan into the body uh, as it sets upside down. Use some black wash that's 50-50 uh, thinner and paint to um, highlight uh, the recesses there uh, on the grill. And then once that's dry go ahead scrape the uh, chrome off and glue that into the body. Now we'll get some parts out for the back end and paint the, um, the chute flat black and install it on the trunk lip and then insert the tail lights into the bumper and install the bumper into the body. Now you can install the body onto the chassis and it just slides into place uh, and the interior panels will rest on the chassis frame. Uh, don't glue it into position uh, so that you can uh, show the engine off like a funny car body would be uh, uh, used to display the engine. You'll have a few extra parts and all the extra decals left over. Um, plus, um, well, there was the fuel pump that didn't fit and I didn't use the magneto because of the uh, pre-wired distributor. And there's a support bar uh, that has no use. Uh, I just used one for the support and the kit has two. Well, there you have it. She's a gorgeous looking model when you're done. But we can't sugarcoat it. Uh, it needs some fit and finish um, work. Uh, the body doesn't really fit exactly um, and some of the pieces don't uh, mate up real well. So the rule of the day here will be test fit, test fit, test fit. Now it's not a real stellar uh, model but when you get done with a little work she is gorgeous and it's a great subject kit. The motor looks good when it's finished but it doesn't um, uh, fit real well and it's kind of cheap looking with the starter and the oil filter just attached to the oil pan. Uh, but once it's installed, you can't see it anyway. Um, the interior is simple, but it, that's the way race car is. Um, it would have been nice for some decal gauges, though. The instructions on installing the steering wheel are a little uh, unclear, so you need to flip that over to make it uh, have a nice rake to it. The rims and tires fit well and look nice, although the rear tires are mismatched. The body's a stock body. It should have all the emblems removed for a funny car. Um, overall, fit uh, of the body and the chassis wasn't too bad, although it does sit a little high in the front. Um, once completed, the car looks great. 
I would say that uh, you can still find these on the internet and online auction sites, uh, sometimes in larger um, full, full line hobby shops as well. But uh, as you can see, it's a gorgeous subject and it'll look great. If I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. We hope you've enjoyed this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, you can find us on Facebook and at our website, however, www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.